Hey guys, uh, I hope some of you saw my community post and you were expecting this video. Um, I apologize that I look like garbage. Um, I've been fighting off strep throat for the last couple of days um, and beating back 103 fever, so I look pretty terrible. Um, I wanted to share with you a miraculous event that took place uh, with me over the last couple of weeks. And I told you in my community post that I had the receipts. And what I mean by that is I'm going to show you um, evidence of what I believe to be God working in my physical body to, to bring healing over me thanks to a sister in Christ. And <clears throat> I have the receipts because I'm going to be showing you some EKGs and some pictures of my heart to show you exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Um, those of you out there who are cessationists, who don't believe that God still does miracles today, you're going to have your work cut out for you to try and explain this, all right? In order for you guys to understand some of the stuff that I'm going to be showing you in the video, um, I need to give you a little bit of a crash course on medicine and EKG so that you'll understand what you're seeing and it will mean something to you. An EKG or an electrocardiogram is basically a picture of the electrical activity of a person's heart. It measures where the electrical flow is flowing from, where it starts, where it ends, it's measuring the rate, rhythm, and quality of the heart um, and all of the electrical activity within the heart, okay? And that's what I'm going to be showing you today, some pictures of my EKG. Over the last couple of weeks, um, some of you may know this, some of you may not, um, I've been having issues with my heart. Um, I would be having dizzy spells out of nowhere. My heart would start fluttering and skipping beats. I was, I was having what we call in medicine PVCs or premature ventricular contractions, and I was having about 2,000 a day, which is highly abnormal for me. Um, and it would be uh, accompanied by dizziness, feeling like I was going to pass out, shortness of breath, chest pain, all of which are highly abnormal for me. Um, and this was going on over a two-week period of time. And um, so one day when I was at work, I decided to put myself on my monitor and take an EKG of what was going on with my heart so that I could see for myself what my EKG looked like, okay? Now, what I found was that there was a certain portion of my heart that was not receiving enough oxygen, okay? When you look at an EKG, and I'm about to show you a picture of an EKG, um, you're going to see four different portions of a person's heart, all right? We call it upper lateral inferior, which is the lower part, septal and anterior, okay? So in medicine, anterior means front, inferior means bottom, and then um, septal is the middle of your heart in between the chambers, and then you, we, we uh, talk about lateral, which is the sides of the heart, okay? Um, and we see all of these facets when you're looking at an EKG. So if we see any irregularities in an EKG, we know exactly where in the heart that irregularity is showing, okay? So I'm going to show you a picture of my 12 lead when I was sick. This <clears throat> is my 12 lead, okay? This was taken inside of an ER. This was not the one that I took on my monitor. All right, and so here you're seeing that there are different little numbers next to each one of these lines, okay? Two, three, AVF. And these all correspond to different parts of your heart, all right? And you'll see this little spot that I have circled, all right? You see this little wave, this inverted wave that goes downward here, okay? That's in leads 2, 3, and AVF, okay? And that's the bottom part of your heart, or what we call the inferior part of your heart. In a normal person's heart, this little downward inflection is upward, just like you see here in lead 2, all right? That's what it, would, that's what it should look like here in lead 3, all right? A normal person's heart with a normal healthy heart will look just like this, with the upward inflection here in lead three. But as you can see here, that's not the case. My T wave, that, that little inflection is called a T wave, is inverted, it's downward, okay? That's highly abnormal for a, tw for a 12 lead, all right? And what that usually means, well, it can mean one of two things. It could be a pulmonary embolism, which we ruled out because I had a D-dimer done, or it could mean that there is not enough oxygen coming to that portion of your heart, all right? and because I was having dizziness, I was having a lot of ectopic beats and PVCs, the flutters, the skipped beats that I was telling you about, I was feeling very fatigued. All signs were displaying that there was, for some reason, not enough oxygen getting to my heart, okay? Now, it's very important for you to understand <clears throat> that over the last couple of weeks, 
I have had about five EKGs done in five different locations. Two of them were on an ambulance that I did myself, two separate days, two separate monitors on two different trucks on two different occasions. And then I had three done in three different ERs. Okay. And then actually six, I had one done in the cardiologist, which I'm going to show you in the cardiologist's office. Okay. And all of them, except for the one that I'm about to show you, showed marked T wave inversion, that little circled part that I told you with the T wave that was inverted. All right. All of them on, four, on uh, five different locations, five different days, all showed that there was not enough oxygen getting to the bottom part of my heart. Now, the scary thing about that is this is usually what happens um, leading up to a person having a heart attack. We call that CAD or ACS, coronary artery disease, um, or acute coronary syndrome. When you start seeing ischemic changes, we call that, or not enough oxygen getting to the heart in, in certain leads, one of the things that you suspect is that that person um, has plaque buildup or there's something that's blocking the blood flow to that portion of the heart. And so they're not getting enough oxygen to that portion of the heart. And eventually that becomes what we call a heart attack or in medicine, we call that a myocardial infarction. Okay. And so that was my concern. Now I'm only 36. So that's highly abnormal for a 36 year old to be having those kinds of ischemic changes. It's rare. It's not unheard of. You know, it does happen in certain individuals, but um, it's generally not something that you see in somebody my age um, I'm relatively fit. I'm by no means obese. And so it's a very rare finding. And yet it was concerning because it wasn't just 12 lead changes. I was having symptoms, right? And so this went on for two weeks and the doctors that were looking at my EKG were puzzled. They did not have an explanation for what was going on. And it was leading to the point where I was going to have to consider getting a heart cath, where they go in with a guide wire um, through your wrist or your leg um, and they send a wire up into your heart to see where there, if there's blockages. It was getting to that point. And um, I have a sister in Christ named Paulette. We have a sister in Christ named Paulette. And she's a wonderful sister in Christ. Um, and I had told her about what I was going through. And for two days, day and night, she was praying, specifically that God would touch my heart. And that, um, <clears throat> and that he would heal my heart. And she was telling me this, that she was praying day in and day out that the Lord would touch my heart and that he would heal my heart. Well, on Friday, I had seen the cardiologist and he had scheduled for me to have a stress test. And a stress test is where you go in and they intentionally stress your heart by putting you on a treadmill till they get your heart rate up very, very high. Um, and then that increases the oxygen demand of your heart. So if there's any areas of your heart that aren't getting enough oxygen, um, they'll start to be able to see it on the stress test. So I had this um, scheduled for Friday, and I had not told this sister in Christ, Paulette, that I had this scheduled. She didn't know that I had this appointment scheduled. She just knew that I was having problems with my heart. Well, when I had gotten to the cardiologist uh, on Friday to have this stress test done, this had already been going on for two weeks, and I had already had those five other 12 leads that were showing those ischemic changes. Well, the first thing that they do when you get ready for a stress test is they hook you up to their EKG and they take an EKG of your heart. Well, the nurse that was hooking me up to the EKG, she said to me, um, so I hear that you have T-wave inversion, which is that little part that I had circled that was inverted. And I said, yeah. And she's looking at the EKG that she's taking now and she says, I don't see any T-wave inversion on your, on your 12 lead. And I paused and I stopped and I was like, well, there must be a mistake. I, I told her to print it out and show it to me. And this is what she printed out and she showed to me. Now you'll notice here, this is the same lead, lead three, that I showed you on my problem 12 lead, all right? And you'll notice that that same T wave that was inverted for two weeks on every other monitor that I had taken was now normal and upright. Just for a comparison, I'm gonna show you my old 12 lead in the same lead, lead three. Lead three, here, and the T wave is inverted. That's exactly what it was showing on every monitor for two weeks. This is what it looked like the day of my cardiologist appointment in the same lead. Now, to some of you, this may you don't understand medicine, but EKGs do not change like that overnight. Um, unless there was some kind of intervention, like if I had had a heart cath or somebody went in and cleared out the blockage that was causing the ischemia to my heart, 
EKGs don't just resolve themselves like that. They don't just change like that literally overnight. And so the nurse was dumbfounded. She said, I don't understand what you mean by T-wave inversion. Um, your 12 lead looks completely normal. Well, luckily, I had brought with me my 12 leads from previous tests, and I showed it to her, and her jaw dropped. She had not ever seen anything like that before, and neither had I. Well, I left my cardiologist appointment, and like I told you, my sister Paulette did not know that I had this cardiologist appointment. And as I was walking out the door from my cardiologist appointment, she texted me, not knowing that I was leaving the cardiologist, and she asked me about my heart as I was walking out the door of the cardiologist. And I knew in my heart that this was the work of the Lord. And I believe in my heart that the Lord was specifically responding to the prayers of a sister in Christ who was praying over my heart that God would touch my heart and heal me. And I'm telling you this as a person of science, as a person of medicine, that I truly believe that was a miracle. There is no other explanation. I've showed this to many doctors. Nobody can explain what I just showed you. God does answer prayers. I just want you guys to know that. And he still works miracles to this day. I love you guys.